Hi everybody, I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the, the Streeters. Streeters. Welcome to the RDRV channel tonight with the live Q&A. Welcome everyone. And, hey. And it's a great week, start of a week and we have a full house tonight. We have a full house tonight. We're now broadcasting live from our new studios. and uh, Or studio, it's not plural. It's studio. <laughs> we're just on the opposite end of the building. So everything has went from the right side to the left side, but it's much more comfortable and we have a lot more uh, space actually, yeah, Barb, yeah. I think. So yeah. welcome everybody tonight. We'd love to have you and uh, we're uh, looking forward to answering some questions and we've got some right out of the bat. Yeah, we, we've got some, uh, some questions. Um, so uh, first we want to say thank you to Sunshine Glassworks for sponsoring tonight's that's right, Barb. Live we want to thank Sunshine. Or this month's live stream. This year's live this stream. This year's live stream. Yeah, thank you, Sunshine. We appreciate everything. And don't don't forget, if you're just looking for tools and supplies, or if you're ever just needing and you're needing glass, Sunshine has over 15 different colors in stock from all the different manufacturers. And a shipment of Wismont just came in, so they're up on that. And I would check with Scott as well because I believe the black back foil uh, should be in inventory as well. So, Yeah, um, so let's just go ahead and start with the first questions that came in and then we can move on. We have some great comments here. And uh, Kathy wanted to know about baking soda. Um, let's see, when you clean with the baking soda already mixed in the container or do you wet the paper towel and dip in the baking soda? Well, so that you don't contaminate everything. What I like to do is is you can you know put the baking soda on it. I put it in a jar. I mix it three parts water, one part baking soda, shake it up and apply it and then clean it. I, I just put it in a jar because it's easier to keep up with and you don't have to throw it away every time you use it. So. 
Yeah. And it doesn't go bad. Th- figure it sticks in your stays in your refrigerator for months at a time, eliminating owners. So imagine what it'll do, you know, just in a jar with a lid on it. Right, so. right. But it works great. And I hope you enjoy the process. Yes. Um, so Annick wants to know, um, she's from uh, Bonita Springs, and she wants to know, what wire do you use with the leaf? You mentioned 16 gauge, but not clear on that. Yeah, it's a, the small wire that, that is available, and it is a 16 gauge. So it's pretty small, and you, you can use that on all your sun catchers because of the diameter of it. I really like to use it around the perimeters of and re- reconstructing and reinforcing uh, lampshades as well. So yeah, use the smaller, uh, the 16 and 20, and I prefer the, the 16 is much smaller. So Yeah. So. Yeah, and it works really well. So, but thanks for the question. That's great. Thank you. Uh, let's see. We had another question from Wakefield, Quebec. Uh, Sylvie Jalbert, she's a new member. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, we appreciate we that appreciate so much. It. And Melissa Welcome. L. and Martha's here. Jennifer's here. Our members, a lot of our members are here tonight. Um, uh, let's see, Mimi is here, Michael McBride. And lots of questions um, coming up, so yes. hang on, everybody. Okay, Julie's here. here Hi, Julie. Okay, so um, what happened? I took sunshine down. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm they got their money's y'all. worth tonight. <laughs> I hope you t- took that. down that phone number. We're okay. good. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry about that, y'all. I'm trying to look at these questions. and um, oh, We're helping okay. each other out. We're helping each other out. Okay, let me see. If you have a question, just put it in the chat with a Q. And we and will, we will get it answered see. tonight. Seven okay. o'clock. I had a question. Where is six fifty seven? Is that where you had one? Yeah, no? I got. We got that one. So okay, let's so see. seven p.m. Well, Martha said she talked with Scott at Sunshine and purchased an Aqua Flow system for the Inland Grinder. Great. Yeah, you're gonna love that. Oh my gosh, that's a nice setup too. So. Um, thank you for speaking with Scott, and he that, again, they are so helpful up there. So they we, really we are. We want to thank them for sponsoring our show. They really are helpful. Um, okay, here's a question from M. B. Volker. Do you have any advice about convert converting photos into stained glass patterns? Um, you know, you can do that and you, there's a program and I'm not sure what it is, but you can turn it into a line drawing, but right. then, but also you take your photo and you can go into a uh, rapid resizer, join, join rapid resizer, take your photo, upload it into their program. And then you can actually print your photo out in, you know, clean it up and then print it out the size that you want to make the stained glass window. So that. That does work as you well, can, am I right, Barn? Right, but you can also, there's a free program called Procreate, and you can download that, and you can put your photo into that, and you can do your line drawings right over your photo. That's right, because so you, you know, just layer it. Barbara and, has uh, that attached to her iPad, which is really Yeah, nice. and so that's a simple program, and that'll get you started. So look at that, do some, do some, um, yeah. Play around with it. You'll love it. So as I mean, mo- I'm, yeah. I'm sure you'll like it. And as most of you know, that when you cop- copy and enlarge things on the copier, it doesn't work out. So some of these programs will help you a lot more than just re- resizing the screen on your copier. Because I'm going to tell you, the pattern's not going to work out if you do it that way. So. Yeah, you have to have a program to get the size right and i want to say hi to all of our members and all of our subscribers out there y'all with your help we are probably going to hit fourteen thousand subscribers yeah. <laughs> by know, tomorrow I, at 24 hours <laughs> i didn't think about it but february february only has 28 days so we're three we've days robbed. short Barb. <laughs> We're three days we could short. Have had three more days to get to fourteen thousand subscribers. Yeah. we have a goal but, of one thousand subscribers a month. Yes, we do. So I don't know if we're going to make it this month, but if you're out there and you're enjoying our programs, please subscribe. It really does help us meet our goals. Right. Yeah. Twenty five thousand subscribers this year. Yeah. And so that's our goal. One by our December thirty first, New Year's Eve, we want to have twenty five thousand subscribers, and we can do it with your help. So yes. Thanks you, again. Y'all are so great. Let's grab some questions out of the air, Barb. Okay, let's see what's happening. Let's see here. Um, Sylvia, and she is. A, she's the Sylvie. Sylvie. 
She's a new member. Hi, Sylvie. I have purchased your putty recipe and did a half a batch. Your putty seems black on your videos, but mine stayed a light gray. Is it because I put only half on the black paint? Only half. Well, I think you know what I do with, with the black paint, and that and that recipe can be floated one way or the other. Sylvie, just go ahead and add a little bit more black paint and get it that what you want. But once you putty it and you start polishing the lead, the lead's going to turn black. It doesn't matter how dark that putty is because the polishing process of the lead cane window is also the cleaning process but it will also make that lead, it, it'll make it really a dark, dark gray pewter color, and then you'll know it's finished. You know what? Is our studio sitting crooked? <laughs> Is our camera crooked? No. Okay. No. Let us know if you think our camera looks crooked. It's not. Look at, the, look at the lines in the brick. Okay. Look at all the right. lines in the brick. We're all right. Okay. We're good. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, I know we're straight across there. We're good, yeah. Okay. So the new window behind us, y'all, this is a, a window that was, um, this is a forgotten window. A window that was repaired and uh, forgotten by the client from many, many, many years. So here, it's here now. And y'all, there's some very interesting glass in this window. There is flashed glass. And there's also a glass, the amber glass around the red there in the center is a process of using silver stain and squeegee oil over gold textured glass. So it gives it this mottled look. Uh, those of you that mess with the kiln and fool with paints, the silver stain is uh, like a clay base uh, paint that goes on the glass. And then after it fires, the clay dries and you rinse the clay off and it leaves this beautiful, what color would you call it? Like a burnt umber, orange color, reddish, absolutely gorgeous color. So what they've done is they've painted this glass, matted it on there, okay? And then they took squeegee oil with a stiff brush and splattered it onto the clay and separated it. And when the glass fired, it left these beautiful mottled rings and I am... Just so uh, impressed with that technique. I'm going to have to start using it in some of my projects because I really like it, Barb. Yeah, we're going to play around with that. It's really great. Uh, if you guys want to learn how to paint, um, there is a painting video coming up. Um, and yeah, there's there's a couple of videos I'm not up. sure we if have, it's online yet or not. It's not. It's not up okay, and running yet. Okay. So, but as soon as it comes up, we will let you know we will let you about know. it and to sign up for it because you'll be able to take this class from home and uh, and learn a tremendous amount of the process itself. So, And, and we're looking forward to it because we're going to take it so that we can tell you how to He's going to take it. I'm going to take it. Um, and it's uh, through Derek Hunt. It's and through just Derek. Check out his... Uh, his, um, you know, we missed channel. Derek in, in Corning last year, and uh, so um, he's putting all this together, and it's going to be on his website. So, we're, and we're going to be able to do uh, what's it called? Remote learning uh, from the UK with Derek on a painting class, and I'm looking forward to it, Derek. Yes, um, he hopes he can get in there, Derek. So, so yeah, if I can get if in there, if you don't, Derek, yeah. we're, we're, we're looking forward to it, and we're promoting it for you because you you're the best. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Judith has a question. All right. Have you used glass line paint? Do you have any recommendations re glass paint? Glass line, I have not used I have that. not used glass line. We use the Rocher paints because everything we do is fired. And I'm sure that the glass line paints might be fired too, but it's just a much lower temperature. I'm not sure. And, I'm not um, sure. If I'm it not is sure. Enough. Yeah. But no, we use the Rocher paint, so I can't we can't say one way or the other about um about those class lines so okay so that uh okay so the two questions about color line paint so is there something out there on the internet about it because uh i don't know about it and i'll check it out and see and give you my opinion but uh i've Rich. not used it before mm -mm, we haven't richard's got a good question for you Lauren. and where is that right there where do you see richard's question Okay. Did Miss Mary follow you over to the new 
studio. studio. Of course she yeah. did. She's, she's, sleep <laughs> <laughs> she's sleeping under our table. This table's open on both ends, and she can climb right in it, and she's sound asleep. She has a little pillow under there. Yeah. Um, oh, and she 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 <laughs> went from a... From, here she you is. Hear? You hear? <laughs> she's, she's getting. She's stretching out and talking back. But we found out, y'all. So for Valentine's Day, this is just a quick story. And you know what? Before I tell my story, I want to say hi to Ray, and I want to thank you, Ray, for everything you do. And let everybody, let's give Ray a big thumbs up because he's working harder than than we all really know. Thanks, Ray. We appreciate Thanks, Ray. everything. We appreciate you. So anyway, here's my story, guys, and I really do appreciate you, Ray. So my story was for Valentine's, and um, so y'all have probably heard about the doggy DNA. Well, for Valentine's, Barbara somehow, during all the days that I was out putting in shower doors or whatever, she snagged, it wasn't easy. <laughs> she snagged Miss Mary's DNA and sent it away. Well, lo and behold, it wasn't here for Valentine's. But the paperwork was given to me as it was printed out so that I knew that it was coming. So anyway, and um, so anyway, we find out Miss Mary is is 87 percent beagle. She's 10 percent um, coonhound, coonhound, black and tan coonhound, tree walker coonhound, black and tan. And then she, her other percentage of just like three percent is this massive hunting dog. In Africa, and I, I, it's not massive. They it's just a anyway. If, if they go. They take it game hunting in Africa, so it's a bad dog, apparently. So, but Miss Mary is so happy that she found out exactly what she was. So we're so excited. She's so thank you bigger. for letting me tell you story. We have a lot of questions to answer. She's Let's a get lot moving. bigger, bigger than a beagle. Though. She is. I hope she wakes up. She's twenty that. some inches tall, and she weighs. <laughs> She topped out last week at about 62 pounds. So she's getting big, y'all. She's supposed to be 70 to 75 pounds. So because she's the female of the breed. So. Yeah. She did follow us, though, you know, and we did. You know what? The uh, Somebody, Ricky, donated a, for a new, a new sweater for her. We actually bought her a raincoat. She loves yeah, it. Yeah, we bought her a raincoat, Rick. So, so thank you so, so much. So Miss Mary said, raining. thank you for the new raincoat, Rick. She really needed it, too. Uh, let's see, how do you, oh, uh, Bonnie wants to know, how did you fuse your fish together from last week? Oh, I have not fused them yet because they still have to be decorated. So, um, once they're decorated, and I'll be decorating them with Fritz of the same manufacturer, the bullseye, the cis, I'm using a 90 coefficiency glass so that if I want to add some of the Fritz that we use in the glass blowing studio, I can just kind of decorate these fish. But as the process goes through, y'all, uh, I will be sharing it with you because right now I have four more um, compass roses to make for the Merle's Inlet project. And then the fusing part of the of those windows uh, will be done except now. And then we're getting ready to start on the painting. So Barb's going to be quite busy because I've got everything ready for her to start doing the paintings for me. So. Yeah, I'm already busy, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, let's see. I've got some really good questions. Yeah, Rick said she looks good in her raincoat. She does. Oh, you saw that. That's your raincoat, Rick. Yeah. You saw the short where she's. Yeah, she likes a rainy it. day. She's in it. She's, she's in, in it. it. And she um, does. She wears it well. Yeah, it's cute on her, too. She was really adorable. So thank you. Uh, let's see, Magali, she wants to place a stained glass into an old antique window. When buying an antique window, what should she look for and be aware of? Uh, typically, Magali, what happens on those older windows, on the sashes, that's a sash. So what happens on that older sash is you need to look in the corners because a lot of them are rickety and a lot of them are rotten. So look into that. And a lot of, but if they're, if they're just loose because uh, most of them are f not finger jointed, but you know, there's a, a, a joint that's in there that goes inside of each other like this. And if you can, if they come apart, that's okay. Cause you can glue them, put them back together, have your husband clamp them and screw them together and you're good to go. Just watch for the rot because the rot is tough to stop. So the dry rot from water is really hard to stop Magali, but that's, 
that's where you're going to run into the problem. But you can always glue it and screw it and make it much more rigid than it would be if you're going to purchase it, you know, for a very small amount of money. But watch for the rot, hon. Watch for the rot. Uh, Julie Graves followed your our short uh, to fix the pencil cup cutter uh, so that the grip holds better, and it's much easier. Is it? Her. Okay. All right. She said thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad we could help. Because I, I, I really think it's much more comfortable for me, too. And we're getting ready to... Um, you know, we told y'all we we're going to be sharing the drawings with you for the Merle's Inlet project. Well, it has been a, a fantastic week for drawing for me. And uh, this this weekend was just a great weekend for drawing because it rained all weekend. And so we're going to be sharing those with you and along with doing a lot of other things. All right. Thank you, Texas hey, Dex Tom. thank you, Texas Tom. You're that. awesome, buddy. We appreciate thank that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we had a, uh, we've got some really good questions. Uh, and we've got a glass chat coming up. We're going to do a glass cutting. Okay. We're going to do another... a glass crying. I mean, cutting. <laughs> <Crying>. <laughs> okay. Don't cry. I will don't say cry. this, y'all. I will say this. You know, Miss Mary has found her voice. Oh, goodness. And, oh, goodness. Let's not even talk about I that. I know. Let's oh, not. Oh, goodness Jason. is right, because she has found her voice. She's very vocal. Uh, vocal. Dana, Dana wants to know, uh, she's having problems with her running pliers. How can she determine, or how can they determine if it is the pliers or the operator? Well, here's the thing, and I, I don't, Dana, I don't know what kind of flowers that you, uh, what kind of running pliers you have. <laughs> You're getting your okay. words mixed So I don't know what kind of running pliers that you have. But uh, here's the thing. So my running pliers have a, this little screw adjustment in the top of them, which I pretty much just back out so that the jaws are closed. But if you're trying to score your glass and then breaking, try to break in your glass with the screw head underneath on the bottom, it's not going to work. That would be uh, the breakee or the breaker. No, that would be the breakee because the breaker is in your hand. So uh, what you want to do is make sure that, number one, the score is in the center. And I think I can show everybody that because you can see pretty well. Yeah, I've, got a, see I've got a pretty uh, clear piece of glass right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm going to keep it like right here. Now, I don't have a straight edge that's sitting at the table with me, but, you know, because let's, we're just going to, we're going to push this. We're going to do a, like a pattern cut, but we're, and we're going to push it. Push patterns, pull straight lines. Remember that, y'all. Because you can't cut patterns with your hand in the way. I promise you that. So when you get to the end, this is what I like to do. I take my glass. I turn it around. Now remember, my screw is on the top. I'll push it. Go in that way. There you go. The little black line there, and y'all can enlarge this on your computer screen, and then you squeeze. Okay. Now, now I'm going to show you what happens if you do it, if you do it the wrong way. And I'm trying to stay in in focus here, y'all. So if I get if I get a little bit out of whack, please bear with me. But anyway, here we go. So this time we're going to push it again because we're cutting a pattern. Now remember, listen to your cutter. And I came off the end a little bit hard on that one. But that's okay. Okay, so remember, the first time we used the screw head was up. Now we're going to try and break this with the screw head down, okay? All right, so now if I turn this over, I can show you. You see that? I'm squeezing the fire out of this. There's blood in my fingernails, okay? If I turn it over... Guess what? Y'all make sure that your pliers are in the right direction, right side up, in order to be able to use them. Remember, your running pliers, your top jaw is concave, and your bottom jaw is your bottom jaw is convex, and your top jaw is concave. And I think maybe the easiest way for me to show you that will be to look at these pliers right here. Okay. Now somebody asked, and I'm gonna go ahead and answer this question, okay? Somebody said, those are the biggest running pliers that I've ever seen. 
these are not only are the these are not the biggest running pliers that they make for glass. This these are used for glass up to three eighths of an inch thick. After that, it requires a totally different breaking system. But this these jaws watch as you squeeze this this jaw goes up. This bottom jaw goes up. These are called running plate running pliers. The more you squeeze, the further the run will go. Now these pliers will actually run a piece of glass by squeezing the handle as far as 130 inches, y'all. Go figure that. That's a little over a little over 10 feet. 10 foot 10 to be exact. These when they're squeezed will run a 2 inch strip out 130 inches. Now and these when these run pliers when they're squeezed these jaws float okay see that just like that now these these running pliers these aren't definitely not stained glass running pliers these running pliers right here right now this when I bought these 43 years ago y'all they were $190 now they're close in excess to about 400 so anyway um, again this is one of those tools that when you buy a good tool it will last you forever. So uh, we're going to get back to some questions. Try, make sure you got your pliers. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like putting your shirt on inside out. Unless you ask, nobody's going to tell you that the seams are outside. So. <laughs> I would tell you, baby. I'd tell I know. Hey, y'all, I've been to a party before with a new suit on and still had the price tag. Forgot about That's it. That's another story. That's another Let's story for another you. night, everybody. <laughs> Okay, I think you probably already told us. Okay, Sylvie wants to know. Okay, Sylvie. She has two additional questions regarding the putty. Uh, if I understand correctly, if my lines are not dark, it is because I haven't polished enough. Yes. Okay, how can I tell if the putty is well inside the lead cane? If there is enough putty applied. Well, what you're going to do when you when you putty the first side of the window, when you flip it after you clean that side, flip it over, you're going to have glazing oozing out on the other side, and that tells you that that first side is done correctly. And then you're going to want to come back, and if you're if you're glazing your window in a circular motion and glazing the edges like this, and hold on to the lead, push it in, same way, push it all in. If you if you're doing that, it's going to be glazed correctly. So you want to take some time. Glazing is not a, a fast process. And, but the one thing you don't have to do is you don't have to let my putty cook. Okay. Okay. There's no cooking about it. Once the glazing goes on the window, allow it to sit for 10 or 15 minutes. Go around it. Clean the edges the, of the glazing from the lead to the glass. And then come back and polish it with a acid brush flip it over and do the same thing on the other side and then you can allow it to sit for a couple of days and then come back and clean it before you find do the final install so okay um thank you ed yeah and make sure hey uh sylvie and and everybody i think a, a lot of our community knows this but you you newbies if you're puttying and you're doing lead work Make sure you clean your textured glass completely before you put it away. Because if you don't get it out of the textured glass, your customer is not going to like it because it's always going to be there. So yes, make sure you impossible. clean your textured glasses correctly. And glue chip, same way, y'all. Clean the glue chip up. Make sure it's right before you... Especially if you're putting putty down. Yes, exactly. And with the glue chip, you don't really put the putty down. You... Do you? No, uh, I, I like blue chip. Edge. I go around the edges by hand. Just just like we show you how I prepared the piano window. Which will be coming out will this week. Will be coming week. out. Okay. Hey, so we got some, we have been working, y'all. <laughs> the short on the piano project will be coming out, and that'll kind of finish it up. Then there'll be right. a long video on the whole entire process that will take you through how we do a lead panel and a copper foil panel together. Because there's a couple steps that are a little bit different. Than well, they are, and you you know you have to you have to you have to do some puttying by hand. You have to do some creative thinking because when you're you know the like on this particular window, the part where the piano keys were going in the lid, I already knew that. But how in the world was I going to put the black keys on the piano? Because 
and keep myself from having to cut 200 extra pieces of glass. So in this video, we'll be sharing with y'all, I'll show you exactly what I ended up doing. And to me, I think it looks prettier. Than it the turned out fantastic. And it was one of those things where you had to get in there and do the work. Before you could figure out how to finish it. Before you could really finish it. And he had a couple of ideas how he was going to do it. But then when he got into it, he was like, I, it's, it's just not working. But he, the solution was genius. So. Look for. I look forward to Boy, sharing that's a, that video. Boy, that's a with huge you. compliment, y'all. The word, the G word. <laughs> I look forward to sharing that video Thank with you, you guys. Okay, Jen has a question. She made the box last weekend for her. Oh, daughter. Dana. <laughs> huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. Never mind. I'm sorry. Uh, Jen made the box last weekend for my daughter, and for her daughter, <laughs> and used heavy texture glass where the hinges went every time. She finished the solder, the hinge and the foil came off, it lifted. Yep. What do you recommend? Well, because you're you're uh you didn't use and you know, this question came up too, Barb. When do you know when to use bigger or smaller foil? Well, I found out when, when I use smaller foil that's right is on the piano window for the black keys because I dropped down from seven thirty second to three sixteenth. It's significant, y'all, and you got to pay attention. So here's the thing. If you're going to use heavy textured glass on a jewelry box, you got to use wider foil because you got to be able to build that up. And if you if you're if the foil's coming up on the edges, two things are happening. Your textured your textured foil isn't allowing the foil to stick because it's not big enough. The other thing is is you're trying to to solder the the texture and you're getting it too hot because you're having to spend too much time to make the foil look right. So, um, this is my wider foil, right? Yeah. Wider foil, wider foil. And I think that you'll be, um, you'll be happier on that back side, Jen, because it's, it's going to require, if you got a heavy textured glass, you know, and, and boxes are great and everything, but you also, you also, you, now this box, you're learning something. You're learning if you're going to use a heavy textured glass, you need a different foil. And that's all. And you know what? It's a learning experience, not a curve. So that's good. Now you got it. Yeah. And if everybody in our community is listening, they got it too. <laughs> yeah. So that's just a little tip you don't find out till you get in there and start working. And yeah. And, you know, I, I learned a long time ago not to even put heavy textured glasses on boxes. But I bet it was pretty. I bet it was and gorgeous. And Jen said that she ended up aborting the hinges and made a lid that fit over the box and it worked out, uh, but she was just curious how to do it, next, yeah. what to do next time. Well, use a bigger lid and they, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, a bigger, a wider foil, quarter inch is typically fine. Five sixteenths is going to be a little bit fat, but if you get it and you can bead that up and uh, something that I found out, they have pre-made hinges, y'all, that are a quarter inch and five sixteenths, but they're too big. And uh, so they're really, I, I don't like those. I like the two part hinge. So uh, thank you, Saltwater Haven. We appreciate that. And uh, so, so we want to, you know, just every time we do something, y'all think about this. Every time that we do a new project or we, uh, we approach something from a different angle or a different altitude that we're normally not used to, we always learn something. So think about it. That, Jen, is a just a little bit of a learning curve, but by you asking the question, we shared it with the whole community, and now everybody knows the answer. So yeah, thank you very much. thanks for sharing that, Appreciate Jen. that. Uh, Dana said thanks. She believes the operator can test and fix the problem with the pliers, and she is looking forward to some... Smooth cutting. Smooth running. <laughs> oh, isn't that the name of wasn't that the name of a movie? Smooth running, right? Right. Yeah, uh, yeah I like that. Uh, Jen said she was using seven thirty second foil. Thanks so much. Okay. Yeah, yeah because think I, about that when you're working on different things. Yeah, yeah, because like I said, with this piano project that's in the video, you'll see I dropped down to three sixteenths, and you know what? I was actually lucky. I found a brand new roll in my foil box that I keep a lid on. Um, because of the humidity here, but I found a roll of three sixteenths, and it worked out really well. And let me tell you, 
when you're when you're used to foiling with seven thirty seconds and you just rock in with that stuff and you drop down to three sixteenths and it's the same thickness of glass that you're working with, oh my gosh, pay attention, y'all, because that drove me crazy over how many pieces was it? Seventy nine pieces I had to do? Mm -hmm. Seventy nine pieces. One inch long and a quarter of an inch, maybe less uh, maybe yeah, maybe a quarter of an inch wide. <laughs> right. It's really pretty. Yeah, so, but we appreciate everything, y'all. Um, okay, so, uh, let's see. Rick Day wanted to know, would wire around the box lid edge have worked as well? Well, you can reinforce it with, uh, with that, and I have, I have not put wire around the box lid. So, I, you know, I don't know. I think, I think maybe a solution to the problem would be, let's change the foil size to quarter, and then let's reinforce it with some 16 gauge wire and see how that works. See how that works. Yeah. Yeah, actually, or you could go 20 gauge because, you know, 20 gauge is, is a little bit fatter than that, but uh, I think the 16 is much easier to work. And you know, that is, that's a good question, Rick, because maybe you could reinforce that with the wire, but I, you know, I'm not really sure. I think I think the problem was is there wasn't enough biting on the glass, and then and then we got heat underneath of it, and the glue turned loose, and the flux went underneath into the groove on the texture itself, and that's what was causing the glass to yeah, break. Yeah, because the, remember, textured glass is not all one thickness; it's thicker and thinner and thicker and thinner. So that's where your problem. Oh, yeah, it stemmed from that, but it's very possible you could use wire to help the problem yes. after you did change the uh, copper foil size. So. That's right. But that's a great. That's a great look at it. See what I mean? Once we start the question, y'all, we get lots of different answers. I love it. Uh, Brenda said you could also get a ripple bit for your grinder. Uh, and it will smooth the edge, so your foil will stick. Back. Yeah, you can do that, or you can tilt your textured glass up on its edge and run it through the grinder that way. And I, I did that the other day on this uh, on this piano project on a piece of textured glass that's in it. And I did it on the grinder. And let me tell you, that worked awesome. Woo! Use the one inch diameter head, of course. And that allows you to cover a lot of surface. So, so we put out two videos last week. Uh, the grinder Bob's been video real busy. and the fish video. The fish cutting video. Uh, so I hope you all had a chance to see those. If you did, give them a thumbs up and share them with your friends. We really appreciate it. Yeah, so that, that fish cutting video, it wasn't just about the fish, y'all. It was about, it wasn't just about the fish. It was about showing you that if you take your time and th through using the tools that you have, your hand tools that are available to you in your tool arsenal, you can you can cut that fish out and clean him up a little bit with your grinder. And that's all it was, y'all. I cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, these fish are going in the kiln. We're going to roll the edges at about 1,375 degrees. And uh, everything's going to round up. And then we've got to, uh, then we'll eventually we'll end up finishing them. And I will show you the finished project. So. Yeah, it's a fun project, and he'll show you it. But it takes a little while. It's one of those things you're talking about—the fish project that you're working on right yeah, now. He yeah. works on it between his other projects, so it's not something he can work on all the yeah. time. Like I have, uh, I have nine fish on the table right now back there that are completed. That, but they're not decorated. They're not cleaned. They're just on the table. So, so um, I had some other questions uh, come in this week. Ed, uh, let me make sure. Let's see, this one came in late. Could you please give advice on an economical way to clean my sun catcher? I have soldered all the pieces together but need to clean before adding black patina. What could I use besides ordering expensive cleaners? Oh, why don't you just use baking soda and water? So, yeah. Uh, and you can watch a video on our in our video lineup that'll show you exactly how to do it. It's one part baking soda to three parts water. Clean it really well and put your patina on it and you are good to go. But that's a good question because that question pops up almost Every as much week. as the rheostat question. It used does. To. Okay, Sylvie has a question. Uh, 
they are doing a 22 inch round stained glass with copper foil. There mm. are a lot of very small pieces. Can they use 3 sixteenths copper foil for all pieces or will it not be sturdy enough? What do you suggest? Oh no, it'll be fine. If you've got a bunch of little tiny pieces, you know, the thing about the thing about copper foil work is the smaller the pieces, the more of them there are, the stronger the window is. Yeah. It's just like But yeah, so if you want to do that to yourself, yeah, you can. <laughs> God bless you. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'd so love no, to see that. You'll have I, to put yeah, it in Yeah, you'll have to put showcase. it in the viewer showcase. So yeah, yes. you can switch it down to 3 16 foil. But you know what? You can also you can also use different size foils in the window to create looks that you're looking for. So if you don't need that small foil in certain places, you don't know, use you it. Don't use it. So but uh, you have to for really, yeah, for intricate pieces, small pieces that you're you're having to use the little grippers to hold it and to grind it and everything, yeah, you need to be doing that. I would think for sure, right, Barb? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Susan B has a question. Okay. What do you think of beveling the sides of a box? Would that make the seams look thinner? Would it weaken the seams? Well, you need something that, uh, you know, you need something, you need something for your hinge to hang on to. And uh, what I would do if you're worried about what the edge is, just because we're using 732nd foil because we prefer them to stay together. However, Susan, what you could do is just use 3 16th foil and that'll shrimp, shrink down your solder joints. But you always have to have something there for that hinge or you're going to find yourself repairing that box all the time. So, so maybe on the front seam, you could use something smaller. Yeah, you can use something smaller. I, you know, I don't, you could miter the corners as well, but, mm -hmm. but when you, you know, when you miter the corners on a jewelry box like that, they get real fragile, they start chipping and then they don't look right. So uh, what I would do is just change my foil size and see if that is the look that you're looking for, so. Okay, Ron says he uses one quarter inch foil on most of what he makes. Yeah, and you can, and, and the thing about it is that now the quarter inch, the wider the foil, yes. the wider your solder joint's gonna be, the stronger your window's gonna be, you know, it, it all works out. But if you're using small, if you're doing really small pieces, you know, I keep an X-Acto knife handy when I'm copper foiling because if I don't like how wide the foil is, I just cut it back, you know? And then I make sure that when that other piece bat butts up to it, I cut that piece back too so that I get that nice looking seam that I want. Mm -hmm. you know? Susan B. said just the sides. Yeah, mm -hmm. Susan, I don't think that that would really matter if, you want it to bevel just that front side to make that kind of fit together a little bit different. Yeah. But you know, you could <clears throat> what you could do is make a small box and see it how it affects the the structure of it. Right. So. And you can always yeah. change the design of the box. Uh, the sizes that we gave you all is for those of you basically that have never built a box and always wanted to learn how to do it. This is a simple box. It's a simple recipe for success. Mm -hmm. And that is what that box recipe is about, is a simple recipe to success. Change the, the, the sides of the box if you choose to. Give yourself a V to solder into. But you'll find out on the back side, the V doesn't work very well when you're soldering the hinge. So. No, you don't want to do that. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Martha had a question. Um, she sent in a question. Uh, did she do? Does she have to join to get your putty recipe? Absolutely not. <clears throat> the putty recipe is at the website, and just go to uh, shop glass shop and go to shop supplies and patterns, and you'll be able to see it. Just scroll down. It says Ed's putty recipe. Ed, yeah, my it's dollar ninety nine, I believe. Yeah, and we. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and thank you in advance for your purchase because that that all of those little things like that help support the RDRV channel and allow us to grow as you grow with us. Oh, so. you know what? When you go to our channel now, if you're on your desktop, I know oh, yeah. you, a lot of you are mobile, but if you go to our desktop, there's a little uh, emblems over there at the banner over in the right-hand corner. And you'll see our Amazon, our website, and now we have a uh, store 
for stickers and mugs and water cups and that kind of thing with Miss Mary's picture on it. Miss Mary, um, she's... And some little sayings like, unleash your creativity and things yeah. like that. That's so. Miss Mary's <laughs> saying. Miss Mary's new saying is, unleash your creativity, community. And, uh, unleash yeah. it. Unleash it. So, um, yeah, so we have that. But also, I put a link in the live stream description if you want to go. And, and so any purchase you do there uh, helps our our uh, situation here at the YouTube studio of uh, RDRV. Yeah, yeah. You know, what we did, we actually, this this was Barbara's uh, crochet and, and knitting studio for our public art projects that we were doing. And so we just kind of switched everything around and uh, found out that we didn't need quite as much room to do some other things that we wanted. So it really worked out well. Yeah. And so Barbara we, didn't lose her studio. Y'all. No, I, I still have my knitting and all that stuff. But um, I'm not working on any public art projects right now. So we didn't need the studio. Uh, it's The studio is a great space to work in. The other studio is being used. Uh, we're opening up the gallery space. Right. We're expanding our <clears throat> blown glass gallery so that we can show off more of our uh, sculptural stuff. So... Yeah. Our, our, we have so we'll have our ornaments and everything up in the small in the gallery up front, and then you'll walk through a doorway, and you'll walk into our uh, sculpture gallery. Yes, yeah. so our so glass sculpture we, gallery. Yes. Yeah. So by October, we'll have everything open and organized, and we'll have a tour for y'all. Yeah. A video tour. Yeah, we'll have a video tour see, of our of um, our new because store. we have so. several areas we in the. That we're renovating right now. Well, I guess you not really renovating. Everything's renovating. We're cleaning up. it up. <laughs> we're cleaning it up. You know, the pandemic kind of put us put us behind a little bit on some things and put us ahead on others. So it was good. So if you have a question, just leave it in the chat, and we'll be happy to answer it. Put a cue there, and um, yeah, we'll be happy to answer it. <clears throat> Uh, let me see if I have another question here for you. A lot of thanks out there for doing the grinder. Oh, okay. Uh, the grinder, the the edge. Oh, the edge. Yeah, y'all. And I can't mini say that G enough. Work surface. Yeah, yeah the yeah, mini thanks. G. Either both of those products that come with the new grinder, and you can get that on the on the on the uh, on the the grinder two or the grinder either one. You can get that that edge thing, and uh, wow. Cannot believe how much it'll change your work if you like to do if you if you do a lot of grinding on straight edges. It's really going to change. It's going to change the way that you grind. Yeah, and really good for if you're using uh, making boxes and those. Oh sure, yeah, right? Yeah, it's really, really good. Um, well, and if you're doing borders, you know, and and the thing about here's the thing about doing borders with copper foil. You can see every little hoopty do in it because it's going to show up because the foil is going to roll into that. So if you're doing lead, it's a little bit different. But if you're doing foil, you better get that uh, that tool for your arsenal, you know. Okay. Uh, I did have a question about how to store flux. Uh, we have people buying the, the large, you know. The 12-ounce flux? So well, well, we buy it by the gallon. But and, I think we have both on. Yeah, on and website. we keep uh, we keep the the flux as long as you uh, because it comes in a cardboard box when you buy. It, I would leave it in the box and then you fill up a smaller container as you need it. And I, you know what? I probably use a, a total of maybe a um, a quarter of a cup of flux a week, and I do a lot of soldering. So. Yeah. But you just know, a little it, jar. just a little jar. I, baby food jar is fine with a, about a quarter of an inch in the bottom. That way, you can put a lid on it. And if just one project, you'll probably use what's in that jar, and then empty it out, put the lid on it, and then next time, just fill it back up again. So. Okay. Uh, did you do? Did? Oh, I don't know. That's not a question. I'm sorry. I uh, did do a tabletop mosaic with stained glass excess. Turned out great. Oh, yeah. Great way to use your leftover. To use your scrap <laughs> glass? Yeah. Oh, my gosh, y'all. Yes. What a great way. Do your mosaics. Do it on the wall. Do it on the table. Do it Everywhere. on the sidewalk <laughs> if that's what you want to do. And uh, Do it on your front porch on, in Just your don't house. throw it in Do the it trash. on the stoop, as they say. <laughs> Just don't throw it away. Yeah, don't throw it away. And, you know, there's a... And if you if you really can't think of something to do with it, 
the art teachers at your local high schools can always use uh, any kind of art material. So donate it to the art schools, y'all. Yeah, just give them a call. And donate it to the high schools. The art teachers will be happy to come pick it up, and they will be very grateful that you thought of them, I promise. Right. If you have any questions, just put them in the chat with a cue. Um, have you talked to Scott this week about what's going on at Sunshine? I have not. I have not, Barb. I, uh, I have not, but I, I do remember him last time we chatted. He did say that the blackback copper foil was supposed to be in about mid-month. And uh, so we're, we're beyond that point now. We're at the end of the month. So hopefully that should be in. They did get a shipment of Wismac glass and are expecting a shipment of Kokomo glass anytime now. So once again, we want to thank Sunshine Glassworks for sponsoring the RDRV channel for the entire year this year. Thank you guys very much. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. And if you're looking for tools, supplies, hand tools, chemicals, all of those things, along with sheet glass, give Sunshine a call. They'll be happy to help you out. Thank you, Ed. And Sunshine Glass, thank you. Uh, Ron said, why are so many people freaking out about lead poisoning? Some have glasses, respirators, and fans. How serious is that stuff? Well, lead well, poisoning is serious. It's very serious. It's a heavy metal poisoning, and it will freak, it will blow you down, bro. So you do need to take precaution. Right. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about those of us that do uh, leading cane, lead cane windows for a living. You should have your, your lead level checked in your bloodstream at least once a year. If you're working in it real heavy, twice a year. We all go to the doctor at least once a year. Just ask him to check your lead level in your blood. It's a heavy metal. It'll show up. It's a very simple test. However, here's the thing about, you know, if you want to sit down and eat a 50-pound box of lead, you better believe you're going to get lead poisoning. If you're going to lead came windows together, smoke cigarettes, and eat lunch before you wash your hands when you're done, you're going to get lead poisoning. If you take care of yourself and do all of the basic needs that are required just from being yourself. Cleanliness is next to godliness, y'all. Yeah. So just, you know, if you smoke, that's cool. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you smoke. But don't smoke while you're lead and a windy together, okay? Or even while you're just soldering. Or, or, or while you're just soldering it. Because, and here's the deal, y'all. If your tongue is tingling on the end while you're soldering, you better get some ventilation in there because you don't have enough. So, yeah, the studio is full of different toxins. toxins. Yeah. So, good ventilation. Uh, if you want to put a, a, a exhaust system in, that's up to you. Yeah. We never have. We've always had good ventilation, a fan, open windows. Uh, if you're in a small space, of course, wear a respirator. But if you're in an open space and you have good ventilation, yeah, and you, you know if you're cutting if you're cutting lead on a saw, you need to wear a dust mask because you, it's dust and it's lead and it will get in you. And when it gets to the bottom of your lungs, you didn't put on weight because you've been eating too much. You've got lead in the bottom yeah. of your lungs. Oh, it's kind of like God. silica dust. Once you breathe it in, it goes in and it does not come out. And look at look at silica dust or silicosis yeah. on the, yeah. Make sure that anytime you're grinding glass that it's wet. That yeah, you should you should out. it should so be. So yeah, wet. read all of the read all of the all the uh, safety precautions safety because precautions. they're they're out there for a reason, y'all. And go by the safety precautions, but you don't have to wear gloves and you don't have to wear a respirator. To lead cane windows together. No. You don't have okay. to do it. But you should have good ventilation. And if you're going to use your, you know, your Lepinet lead nippers that we sell, then you don't need to wear a dust mask either. Because so. they don't create any dust. And if you learn how to use the, the lead nippers that we sell so that you can miter and do all that stuff, you don't need a saw to do that with. You can do it by hand and you can do it 10 times as fast. Oh, I do want to tell, uh, we're talk we were talking to Magali about those old windows. Make sure that you, when you scrape that window, you do it outside and make sure it's wet because it could have lead paint on it. Oh, the old windows are going to have lead paste paint on so them. So make can pretty sure much, yeah. that it's wet and be safe when you're, working with old windows. Yeah, and keep the little one away from it. That's for sure, Magali. Okay. 
So yeah, because lead paint is like really, it's it's yeah. terrible. It's worse. Now that will give you lead poisoning like that. Yeah, because okay? it's dust. You know, when you start scraping, it's dusty. So yeah. Yeah. Be careful. You know, I had a friend you, that you was. You can look it up and read about it. There's ways. To yeah. Do well, it. I had a friend that was actually stripping the bottom of his sailboat, and marine paint is lead-based paint. And during the process, he contracted a cancer, a, a bone deteriorating cancer from uh, from the lead-based paint. He's grinding the paint off his boat with no shirt on and everything. It got absorbed into his skin and eventually, you know, it ruined him. So, so who was that? That's a, a friend of mine that was down at the marina a long time. Oh my goodness! That's so anyway, that was you know uh, the, yeah I've seen it firsthand what the lead based paint will do, and you know when our when we had employees our employees would get their lead levels checked once a year it was required, just because we wanted to make sure not only they were safe because they all had children, but you know that nothing was sneaking up on them that would uh, would be detrimental to their livelihood. Susan so. B. said that uh, Amazon has a lot of lead cleaning liquids and wipes. Okay, well, good. Um, did you hear that, Magali? And I'll put some in our um, in our Amazon. Yeah, store. yeah, yeah. So if you, you know, if that, you know, everybody, you're always worried about Thank something. Thank you, Susan. Thank mm -hmm. you, Susan. And you're always worried about something. And, uh, and lead in this industry with the flux which is an acid uh that's why you don't use paste flux because that stuff smokes and burns and the tip of your tongue it won't catch on fire but it'll feel like it's burning <laughs> and so that's why i use ruby flux i started using ruby flux uh, about 34 yeah. years ago and i've been using it ever since so uh, i don't know i don't remember who told us about ruby bill flux. blakely oh okay bill's yeah he always has that. any glass tonight well, the, the, the same gentleman that told me about Ruby Flux uh, gave me that putty recipe. So. Magali wants to know you got any glass tonight. She's going to be disappointed. Uh, Magali, actually, I do not tonight because um, we weren't sure what we were going to do with the lighting, and I'm not sure, we weren't sure what the dog was going to do tonight. But we do have it all figured out, and um, I don't have any pretty glass to show you tonight simply because, y'all, I don't have anywhere to put it right now but we're working on it so okay. i have to be really careful it's okay. um it's okay. yeah i got some beautiful glass but it's all in in great big sheets but i'm, I'm going to start cutting it next week so i can share it with you yeah he'll be sharing it with you we just didn't know where to put it with the dog laying under the table yeah because like i said she topped out last week at 62 pounds she's getting she's really big y'all she's yeah. sound asleep i wish i well you know what i might take that camera before we leave tonight, the the one that's right there, and you could probably take it off of the thing uh -huh. and bring it over here, and we can probably show them her sleeping. <laughs> we'll show you her sleeping and just said she she's not gonna wake up. She's not gonna wake up unless we jingle the keys and they're in my pocket. So. No, so, Magali, I think he should have some glass, too, but I think the dog was in the way tonight, and he kind of gave up. Yeah. I did, I, you know, just, there's nothing worse than, than I mean, I, I would hate, I would hate to have a piece of glass in my hand, and she walk into it and cut her, and it'd be my fault. Uh -huh. I mean, it's bad. But we didn't know she was going to be sound asleep the whole show. <laughs> no, I didn't either. I mean, she ate at 4 o'clock. She wanted to eat early today. So So we've already got our supper cooked. We cooked supper yesterday, and we're going to go home, and Ed's going to fix us. Uh, what do you I'm making fried rice. He's going to make fried and rice. And barbecued spare ribs. And barbecued spare ribs. So not most not of it's Korean already spare ribs. ribs, just barbecued spare ribs. So most ribs. of it's already cooked. Yeah, we're going to go home and whip up some fried rice tonight. It would be good to go. Oh, Magali's got lots of glass, she said. I'll bet. <laughs> oh, double shot next week. Okay, we'll bring two two pieces next week. We'll bring two. Uh, next week is the viewer showcase. If you have something for viewer showcase, get it in early because I'm going to be doing that and I'm all by myself this week because our producer is on vacation. That's right. And, so, and if you're tuned in tonight, Mr. Producer, thanks for everything. Thank you. And I, I hope, hope you're having, having a good fun. time. Fresh snow on the mountain, my friend. 
uh, Susan B. We, uh, wants a picture of Miss Mary in her raincoat. There is a picture of her and a video on the community page in her raincoat if you want to see it. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to move, we think we might, um, get a shot of the dog. Will that work? Will that come over here? Here, let's go this way. Here, hand it. I don't think it's going to work. Ed. There she is. Okay, wait a minute. Can you see her? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> There's Miss Mary, y'all. Oh gosh. There and she she's is. got that's her new her new bikini. That's what we call her collar, her bikini, because it looks well, like a bikini. Well, you can't see her head. Yes, yeah, she can. There she is, sound asleep. I, I, I promise she's alive. <laughs> she's alive. She's alive. Okay. She's such a sweetheart, y'all. And she says, from her to y'all, lots of love and hugs. And thanks for welcoming her to our family. And now, um, okay, someone wanted to know about the safe disposal of Flux and Patina, Shas Ray. Um, I would say take it to the recycle place uh, in a in a plastic like like the empty plastic coffee container, and then I would put it in where they put the oil and everything else, the paints and all that. That's where it needs to go because there's a special place for that stuff, and uh, they really uh, would have. And it's a good idea to do that. So. Well, we usually use all ours all up. Though. Yeah, we, we don't, don't. I don't have so much. I don't have. I anything. mean, usually at the end of the week, we might have a little bit left in the bottom of a cup or something, and I just put that in a paper towel. And Throw it away. Them. Yeah. Yeah, but don't put it down the drain, please. That goes yeah. right back into. That's us. what we all drink, y'all. We <laughs> all live downstream, as they say. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Just remember, we all live downstream. That's so. right. Uh, did you want to show a picture of her again? Can well, she's she's no. working really hard tonight. Well, I wanted to get it so that I could, if you give it to me, I could go right under here. Here, here. here. just one more thing. Just here, wait a minute. I can go this way. Okay, so we're getting ready to get a live shot of Miss Mary. Oh, she's waking up. She's stretching. She's just stretching, Mommy. See her red pillow? Okay. Where is she? There she is. She just climbs up under the table. Now, the, the, that shelf she's laying on is about 12 inches off the floor. She's Are just cozy comfortable. Up? No, she's not going to wake up. She's just going to lay there. Okay. <laughs> Okay. She is. You know, she wanted, she just wants to say hi to everybody and thank That's you, everybody. All. And, okay. And uh, don't forget to watch the short with her in her raincoat. Because, you know, uh, when we went camping the other weekend at uh, one of our favorite places, it rained all weekend. But even a rainy weekend at that campground is a great weekend. So. Okay, next week, viewer showcase. That's and right, And we're going to show two pieces of glass. Don't you forget. Two pieces <laughs> of glass, yeah. Um, new videos coming out every, shorts every day. We'll have another video coming out this week. It'll kind of. And we may have some drawings to show you, so. Yeah, we're working hard on the drawings at night. So, um, you guys were awesome tonight. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all for, for tuning out. in tonight. Miss Mary, she thanks you. She loves everybody. And uh, she's you, very everyone. vocal. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. We love you. Thank you again for everything, and we appreciate it. We'll see you next Monday night, 